With 11 new unique weapons coming to Battlefield 1 in the Russian-themed DLC, we were bound to get some interesting additions. I showed off the Perino 1908 machine gun last week, with its super crazy reload animations, and extended full auto firing time, but today we're going to have a look at the last remaining weapon that DICE is adding to this pack. This is called the Obrez Pistol. The Obrez is a rather unique weapon for many reasons. Firstly, it's modelled off of the Mosin Nagant bolt action rifle, but it's been cut down considerably, however it still retains its bolt action mechanism. This was a fairly common practice in a few locations during World War I, most notably in the tunnels that were being dug across the Western Front. Now, British soldiers, who were sent below the surface, they were sent there to dig out a network of tunnels that would then be armed with explosives so they could be blown up at the start of a push forwards. They were armed with cut-down Lee Enfield rifles. This allowed them sufficient protection against enemies should tunnels from the enemy cross their path at any point. You couldn't give them a long rifle simply because it wasn't practical but giving them a cut down version meant the weapon retained the power that it had before the barrel was shortened. It's still using the same 303 British round. What makes this weapon so interesting, however, is that in Battlefield 1, it's been designated as a secondary weapon. Thinking back to previous titles, DICE has actually done this before by having the mare leg lever action rifle as a secondary, but that was still a fairly substantial weapon in size. The Obrez is much smaller, but it's still much larger than most of the other pistols you can pick. I thought DICE would make this a tanker or a pilot weapon and give it to them as a primary, but they kind of subverted everyone's expectations and made it a standard pistol. The weapon itself acts very much like a shotgun, having extreme power at close range and then dropping off fairly quickly the further the bullet travels. Because you've lost that stability that the long barrel gave you, the weapon can be quite inaccurate outside 10 meters or so. But when I mentioned that damage dropping off, it's still more powerful than just about any secondary weapon that you can pick. At range, you'll still be knocking 30 or so damage off of enemies, and if they happen to already be on fairly low health, you can pick up some nice kills. Where I found it to be most effective, however, is in close quarters. Popping it out when I know an enemy is close by, and trying to get it in the range of landing the 100 max damage shot. Now I think you can get the 100 max damage inside just 5 meters, so rushing an enemy really could land you a big payoff. You do have to bear in mind, however, that this isn't your standard semi-automatic cartridge-fed pistol. It's a bolt-action rifle, so time between shots is fairly lengthy because you have to rechamber each round after you fired one. If you're going to try and rush enemies up close, you need to be prepared to land the shot or you're likely going to get killed by the enemy that you were trying to kill in the first place. You can also combine the Obrez with your melee attacks, however. Say you land a fairly heavy damage shot, but not quite the 100 damage that you were looking for, you can just whip out your melee weapon and go for the finishing move. The weapon really can be used in lots of different ways. You can pick off people from fairly far out, or you can pack a heavy punch in close quarters. It's quite a versatile weapon. I imagine, however, it won't be for everyone. The M1911 is still widely regarded as the most versatile sidearm in the game, and that will likely continue despite the Obrez being really different to everything else on offer. It is a DLC weapon as well, so only a certain section of the player base will have access to it, which is a shame, but it is a great addition to the secondary options that we now have in Battlefield 1. Oh, and it's an all-kit weapon as well. It's not locked to one specific class. Anyone can equip it for any of the classes once they've unlocked it, which means you can go double rifle mode in the scout class now if you want to. That can be extremely effective as long as you've got some seriously good aim. The other new pistol coming with the Russian DLC is the Nagant Revolver, and I haven't spent much time talking about that because it doesn't interest me as much as some of the other weapons do. I mean, if you compare the Nagant Revolver to the Obrez Pistol, 9 times out of 10, I'm going to pick the Obrez Pistol simply because it's so different. 
Now, the Nagant Revolver is going to offer you something different if you like the revolvers in Battlefield 1. It can fire a little bit faster than most of the others. It's got seven rounds in the revolver instead of six or five, I think some of the others offer. But it's not got as high a damage, so there's a little bit of variation there. But we now have a pocket sniper rifle in Battlefield 1. It is good fun to use and it offers a totally different dynamic that Battlefield 1 hasn't really seen so far. And it's going to change up the gameplay a little bit when it comes to secondary weapons. Let me know what you think of it down below in the comments section or even just tell me which of the new weapons that you're really looking forward to the most. The DLC is not far away now and all of those weapons will be coming to us very soon. I know which weapons I'll be unlocking first, but let me know what you're interested in down below in the comments. And of course, I'll be down there reading as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.